Now, we're not going to be here a long time uh, because we're going to have a food time here in just a little bit. But I want to continue on with, again, and as I, I had Friday off and I had a long drive, uh, I was out of town on Friday and Saturday, or Saturday morning. And so I had a lot of time in reflecting and praying and saying, God, as we go through this sermon series and how we attack what the enemy is trying to, to, to try to get our attention and get us diverted and be able to think, oh my goodness, uh, uh, you know, everything's against me and all this. And I want us to get back to the place over the next few weeks. And, and uh, you know, uh, we, we are blessed with Pastor Anson going to be preaching next week. And uh, yeah, but as we go on from there, uh, the Lord has brought this to me, and I don't know how long we're going to do this as far as the restoration of the authority, and, and here's, here's how long it's going to be, until I can get our church to realize the authority that God has given you to live a life that is above better and better than what you can ever imagine. You see, it is at your hands, it's at your voice, it's your life that God has created you for something incredible. And so when we look at our life and we begin to think in our lives, uh, you know, I'm I'm beat down. You got to know something. You're above all of those things. You're above all the things that the enemy is trying to come in. And listen, we've been over, we, we have learned it and we've talked about it over the last few weeks is that we know that we have this big battle going on. Paul tells us how we battle against the flesh and then, you know, we battle in the spirit and really the battle in the spirit's easy and the reason why the battle in the spirit is is, is because Jesus already won the victory. Come on now. If Jesus already won the spiritual battle, the last thing he's got to do, as a matter of fact, uh, Paul writes to the Corinthian church, he said the last thing, the last enemy that we face is death. But there will be a day that that will be, that will be killed as well. And God, is that, is, that, that is that battle in the flesh. So what we have to recognize is that, God, I don't want to spend my life worried about what's going on in the flesh. I don't want to spend my life being beaten down. But I want to begin to raise up, and I want to begin to walk in the authority that I have. It's not an authority that you walk around like you're better than everybody else. It's not an authority that you walk around that you're holier than everybody else, that you're more spiritual, but it's an authority and a sureness in your life that you got to begin to say, I know what God has given me. And this is what we believe that, that I believe that it exists in each one of you and it exists in each one of you because we need you because we collectively are parts of the body of Christ. And when I talk about we collectively, it doesn't mean that I'm the body, I I am the body of Christ. No, that's not true. I'm a part of the body of Christ. And therefore, this body of Christ is only going to be as strong as the weakest part of the body. So we want to raise us up where we are stronger, where we're mightier, where we work and we do the things that God has us to do. So we're going to look in 1 Peter chapter 4 because this is going to be the foundation of the message this morning. Is that 1 Peter chapter 4, verse, starting with verse 1, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. Arm yourself with the same mind because Christ suffered with us in the flesh. Again, that battle of the flesh, which we all face, and the battle of the spirit. Who armed himself is with arm ourselves with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his, his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. So there we began to look at something. We're not looking at the things that keep drawing us off to the flesh, but we should be walking after the the will of God. His desire for us is to move that in our life. And we say we want the will of God. Well, I'm praying for the will of God. Honestly, we aren't. Most of the time our prayers are, God, do what I want to do, how I want to do it. And if you don't do it that way, then I'm saying, God, I don't know your will. It's because we don't know God's will because we don't want to connect up to what he's doing in the spirit in in, in each one of us. See, in, in order to get to a place where we walk in that authority, we have to be trained and told what not to do. A policeman standing with authority began, he will stand and hold back a, 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 a whole line of cars with his hand because he has authority. Amen. Does he have power to hold back those things? No, he has authority. 
but his authority is backed up by a great power that initiated his authority. In our lives, we've got to recognize the, uh, the power that is in behind us. Is that the police that walk the, the, the police that walk around there with badges on, they have authority to in, invoke a law that has been given by somebody else. You see, that is what we as Christians should be, be began to do. God has given us a principle and an authority behind. He said, I want you to be that authority upon this earth. So we have to do it, and the way we're going to do it is by doing his will. We'll go on, and we're going to read almost this whole chapter because it's important. For we have spent enough of our pastime. We have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in the drunkenness, is that me or is that? Uh, it is. Is there something wrong? Okay. Yeah, because the devil doesn't want us to talk about things that are right. How many of you know that the word of God is challenging? And we are void of the word of God in society today. We want to we speak the words of God based upon how we want to interpret it in order to satisfy what we want to do. But the word of God that he is wanting us to begin to recognize is the truth. Goes on to say, for we spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of God when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, rivalries, drinking parties, and, uh, uh, anybody else had to, probably, yeah, uh, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it's strange. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation speaking evil of you. When you begin to make a change, some of those same people that you ran with, partied with, they'll look at you and say, I can't believe. They'll start the, they'll start the rumor mill. They'll start the, all the other stuff. They'll start the, I can't believe. They'll start the, I know who that person was. Now, here's the beautiful thing. I know who that person was too, but I now know who this person is. Amen. I know who I was, but I know who I am. And you see, we have got to begin to get to that place where we recognize not who we were because we're living in that past life. We're no longer that way. We are born again children of God. God desires for us to begin to step and move forward. It is time for us, the, the hearing of my, my voice this morning, it is time for us, and I'm not picking on just any certain person. This is for all of us. It is time for us to begin to step out and do the, the things that God has called us to do. It's time for us to believe what we, what we say we believe and do what we say we should do. Because, because here, and written in Peter, is, is he's saying, listen, they're going to talk bad about you. They're going to do some things about you. And what happens is, is that we listen to those words, and therefore, we, we, we suffer back, and we move back, and we fall to their persecutions and their aggravations because, you know, they did know us. Well, it's time for us to begin to say, God, I, I knew who I was, but I know who I am now, and I'm going to move forward. And this is the challenge that we as a church need to begin to do. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Don't worry about what they're saying. They're going to be judged for what they're saying to, to you and about you and about their own life. And they're going, to go, they're going to go and say, well, God, he did this and this. He's, and this is what God's going to say. Why didn't you? What was your reason? Why didn't you? For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who were dead that they might be judged according to, the men, to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Where? In your prayers. It is in your communications with God. Prayers are not just saying, God, what is it that you want for me and how can I get? Your prayers are a communication to God about the situations that are around and about those people that have said something about you. I had a conversation here recently and talked with someone and they said, well, is, is it okay to feel that they need to get vindication? And my, my response is, is it okay if you, if you get vindication on you for what you've done? Well, I don't want that. No, well, then we shouldn't let that happen in their life. And above all things, have look, this is, again, 
I, from the moment I started preaching, the moment I ever brought the word of God, the first message that I ever preached was about bringing the love of God into the, into the place. And here's the thing. If we ever want to build something great and firm, it's all got to be wrapped around the love of God. And it means the love of God that accept people right where they are. Then instead of kicking them when they fall, reach down and help pick them up. It's, hey, let's pick them, not only pick them up, but let's carry them through and let's make sure they get to the place that God wants them. It is love. You know why it's love? Because the Bible says God is love. And if we are dealing with one another with love, we're dealing with one another in God. Outside of love, there is no God. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. Fervent love. It's not just that passing, oh yeah, I love you. It's that love that says, whatever you need, here I am. Whatever you need, because God has put you in our lives for a reason. What can I do? How can I help you? How can I do it? So we have to begin to understand that what Peter said, what, what it's saying here in Peter is it's saying, hey, there's got to be a fervent love for love will cover the multitudes of sin. When we walk in our lives and when we look at one another, if we love them and they're failing, then there is a possibility and there is, a, as the word says, your love will cover their sin. Your love will help them in their situation. You see, there's, there's something will help somebody better than kicking them down or kicking on them while they're down. There's something that is that loving on them while they have fallen. Loving on them while they are short. Loving on them when they need somebody to love on them. I know this about myself, and I won't ask you to put your hands up. There's been some times in my life I wasn't lovable. I shouldn't have been. I, I, I had bad things. I, it was awful. Uh, and, 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 and this is after I saved. But the love of God exercised through people that I was in relationship with helped me move past those sins. You see, our job is never to beat somebody down, but our job is to love one another. Jesus said that he said, I want you to love as I loved you. Don't you hate when he adds those type of words in there? Hey, forgive as I forgave you, but you, that takes a lot of stuff out of you, right? So as we go on, it says, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. We could do an altar call now, can't we? <laughs> I love it when I read the word because it's the word. We can blame it on the word. It's not me. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. This is the thing that God wants us to begin to believe in our life, lives that we are we can honestly say proudly, I am God's gift to the world. But so are you. But so are you. God has put a gift inside of you to go out and to share and, and help, help uh, expand the kingdom. Each one of you has received a gift. Minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You have, a, you have a, uh, a responsibility to steward the grace of God. You have a responsibility to give that out to one another. You have, you have the responsibility through the word that you steward the grace of God for those that don't have the grace of God. How are you stewarding it? How are you taking care of it? How are you, how are you taking care of the thing and the grace that God has given you? How is that manifested in your life? Because it is our responsibility to look and say, God, you have done this for me, and I have to steward. You have given me grace, and I have this grace, and I am, am I going to be the one that is going to bestow that grace upon somebody that you don't think is as good as you? Or they have failed more times than you, or they, they've done it all wrong, or they've just gotten saved, and I, I've got to hold this grace back until we see what is about. That's not a good steward of the grace of God. Because here's the, the reality is, is that, he, that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. 
He gave that grace to you while you were yet in your sin and where you were failing. Are we stewarding the grace of God the same way? Are we walking in the midst of a family and a church that begins to say, I am a steward of the grace of God. I've got to give grace to where I think grace is really needed because they're really messed up. And here's what the scripture, I'll give you a scripture for that one. If they're really messed up and it's really bad, where's that sin abounds? Grace abounds much more. So therefore, you're a steward a greater amount of grace. You're a steward a greater amount of love. Why? Because love will, co will cover a multitude of sin. If we will begin to love on somebody, there are people because it really is love that gets people to, to Christ. It's not condemnation. It's all, not all hardcore preaching and screaming and shouting. It is showing them the love of God. Because I'll tell you what, I don't like this God that people portray him to be. I don't like this God. And, and, and honestly, they stand on a, on, on, on a platform or stand on a street corner and talk about how bad these people are and how bad that. That's not Jesus. Jesus would be the very first one to say, but they need my love. But they need my grace. They need to see the how I love so that they can be drawn into that. That is our responsibility. So as we go on, verse number 11, if anyone speaks, who's anyone? So if anyone, like if anyone, if anyone, let him speak as the oracles of God. Oh my goodness. How God begins to speak into our life and what his rules are. I love Jesus because he, not, just, not just because he saved me, because he only gave me two things to go by. It's only two rules. These are my commandments. That you love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And you love that one next to you. The same way. Now there's a bunch of people wanting to get up. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> if anyone ministers, let him do it as the ability uh, in which God supplies. Trust how God is going to supply that. Don't worry about what you're going to do or what you're going to say. When I finally got free in ministry, was a, when, when I began to realize something through the Spirit and through praying, the results aren't up to me. The results aren't up to what I, if I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to preach this. I'm supposed to lay this out. I'm supposed to go through this uh, ministry series. I'm supposed to do this. But the results are up to the Holy Spirit. But more than that, the results are up to you. Hello? The results are up to you. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to steward the word in your life? How are you going to steward the, the love of God in your life? How are you going to steward the love of that person? You know, that one, the one that, that, that really you'd like to strangle. How are you going to steward the, the grace of God to them? I see some husbands looking at some wives. But anyway... Uh, I see some wives saying, yeah, I'm going to take care of you. Anyway, uh, you got to see what I see. Well, let's see where we're going to go. Therefore, goes on down, verse number 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God. Listen, listen that, isn't that crazy? He said, let those who suffer according to the will of God. Does that mean it's going to be easy? Does that mean walking this out? Does it mean, does it mean using that grace to, and, and, and stewarding that grace? Is it going to be easy? No, because there's some that I want to strangle too. I, want to, I'm, I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, amen? amen. I'll get fewer cards. But anyway. <laughs> Not y'all. I love y'all with all my heart. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God, suffer according to the will of God, commit their souls to him. Yes, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, I was. How's it, what else is it going to say? In doing good. In doing good. As to a beautiful or as to a faithful creator is that I humbly give myself to him to do good to you as I am doing it to him. 
I want to steward the grace and the love of God that was given to me and steward it by bringing it to you. By bringing it to you saying, this God is a really good God. He's really an amazing God that he'll take the least and make the most. He'll take those ones that everybody else has discounted and he'll raise them up and make them something better. You see, in our lives, we've got to begin to be those people that begin to say, okay, God, I will do the will of you right here and I will steward it if this is my church. And you see, I got to tell you this, this is, this is really, this is really, I, I didn't understand it, but this is really crazy. I have had people leave the church and in leaving they said you expect too much out of us you're always wanting us to do something I want you to go to heaven and, and works aren't going to get you there but because you're going there you should be doing some things while you're on your way there because honestly, because honestly, honestly, there is this, I want to show you this. This is really, really cool. You see that? This is the Jordan River. This, the Jordan River. It's one of the most fruitful rivers in the world. And I want you to see what, flow, what it flows into. The Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee. That's crazy. It's got the, the, this one of the most one of the this this river is one of the most productive rivers in the world, and it flows into two places. And I just heard that this 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 week, so I, I stole it, but it, it goes with my message. It flows into the Sea of Galilee, and the Sea of Galilee. I did a study on it. It has so much rich nutrients. It has so much stuff in it, but it also flows into the dead sea which nothing can live in they both have the same source they both have the same thing flowing into it the difference is the dead sea never flows out the dead sea doesn't flow out and do anything but the sea of galilee flows out it flows out and it, and it takes care of a lot of area where, where it is you see, so it doesn't matter, using this same analogy, it doesn't matter if you're getting the same word as the person next to you. If you don't flow out and do something about it, there's nothing that will ever grow inside of you. If you don't willingly receive and give out, and then, then you get into that place where I have been in my life. And, I'm, I'm get, giving you this from experience. In my life, there's been times in my life where I held, God, give me the word, give me the word. And I never did anything with it. And guess what? I got frustrated. I didn't feel like going to church. I didn't feel like being a part. I didn't feel, uh, I just, I didn't feel like, I, I didn't feel like I was hearing the Lord. The reason why I wasn't hearing the Lord is because he had already spoken to me and I wasn't doing anything what he had spoken to me. So why would he tell me to do something else? Come on, anybody else ever been there? So when I looked at this, I'm thinking, God, you're right. You're right. There have been people that have left here that have refused to get out of a Dead Sea experience that they were always consuming but never giving out. And they died spiritually. And there was no, nothing in That is the reason why your pastor stands up on this platform and says, I'm going to come up with some crazy things for you to do. I'm going to listen to you tell me some of those crazy things that you want to do. And I'm going to look at you and say, I, I, now from now on, I'm just going to say I'm the Jordan River. I'm the source to get you, get you going, but you're going to have to be the one that outputs it because I can't do everything. I'm trying to keep up with it. I realize something. I am 56. Different than 36. <laughs> Pastor Anson said, yeah, I know. I just came back from uh, young adults. <laughs> He just woke up. But anyway, so when we look at this, okay, pastor, so, so let's get to this because, okay, it's almost dinner time. I hear the dinner bell. So what are the opportunities that I can do? 
Well, we're going to flow this morning. We're going, to let the, we're going to let the Jordan River flow out into you. And you can leave here with a mindset of the Sea of Galilee. Or you can leave here a part of the Dead Sea. And I want you to know, I love you, either one. But I will tell you this. Unfortunately, if you receive and you never give out, you will die spiritually. If your choice is to do that, and that is the reason why I want you to be connected and be a part. Because, here's the thing. There's 52 weeks in a year. There's 103 regularly scheduled services. We do not do, I, this is my opportunity to tell you, we do not do service on Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Rest up, yeah, because we got, we got food to make, and by the looks of what we did this past week, I don't know if we're ever going to have enough turkeys, whatever, stuffing and whatever else. There are 50, there's 103 opportunities for you to serve. And I hear all the time, Pastor, what do you need? Pastor, what do you need? Okay, here is your answer. Here is your answer. Well, I don't know what to do. You know what? We say things from this, this platform so many times and we walk out the door and somebody will ask, are you listening this morning? Will you listen with me? Can I have your check back in? I know you checked out on the mess. Can you check back in? Because here's some things you can do. There's, there's greeters and a hospitality committee that you can be a part of. These, some of these things are so simple, so easy. And it, 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 you just greet at the door or here in the auditorium. It's so simple. And if you're having a bad day and you haven't had one of those good days, go ahead and call off that day. <laughs> or sometimes I want to call off. Um, hosting guest events. I mean, we have some guests that come in and, 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 and they, I would love to have some folks say, hey, I, we'll, we'll take care of the food for them. We'll get everything set up. We'll do all this. Hey, we can do this. Um, oversee the visitor information. Whether you know it or not, raise that little bag up back there. 85% of those bags that are like that right there, I put together. Why? Because those that said, hey, give me something to do, now I'm giving you something to do. Hopefully I don't have to do that. I don't mind. I pray over every one of them. If you've gotten one of those bags in times past, they were prayed over, they were believed over. I'm praying for God to do something incredible in your life, and it really is important to me. I'm thankful for it. Next, children's ministry, oh my gosh, this is a dirty word. I actually had someone to say, hey, it ain't my job to wait and take care of those kids. And they had the kids that were, anyway. anyway. Uh, and here's some things you can do that doesn't involve teaching the kids. They need some people to get, help, get snacks ready. Just get snacks ready. I think anybody can do that. And we have the snacks uh, uh, and of course, teachers, teachers, uh, and clean. So people go down, and clean up afterwards, just straighten things up afterwards. Wait, uh, uh, Miss Pam, I think she must have went over there, but she takes care of the the the, uh, the signing table a lot. Miss Christina, uh, and really Christina, Pastor Christina does it, and she should be getting ready for her class, her middle school. So just, I mean, see, these these are things that are not hard. Um, Youth and middle school. I mean, these are some of the things you could do for our youth in middle school. You know, they need some aids once in a while. Somebody just help them out. Uh, they need event chaperones. You can say, hey, put me down. I'll be a chaperone when you go. Uh, and don't, wanna be, don't be one of the cool chaperones, to, you know. <laughs> some of them, Pastor Shirley knows the cool chaperones, don't we? Uh, and then they need some help cleaning up. They need some help getting their classes ready and they, those things. That, see, we're, we're, we're again... I'm the Jordan River today. What are you going to be? What are you going to be? Just going to be the consumer to dig in? Or are you going to be the one like the ones that says, hey, you're wanting us to do too much. I'm leaving. I'm going to find someplace I can go sit down, hide in a corner and do whatever. Just let me give you a little input on that. You'll be the Dead Sea there too. You'll be never satisfied. You'll never be, you'll never be in a place because you'll never be satisfied following Jesus unless you turn it into being a servant of Jesus. How do I serve Jesus? 
by serving that person next to you. Let's see what else we got. Food pantry and clothing closet, which you guys, that is like no kidding. Uh, I mean, Mary's here a lot, just kind of uh, taking care of clothes and stuff. Uh, we're here, uh, I think, what is that, every Thursday or something, or every sometime. Uh, Freddie, Freddie's here most of the time. Uh, they're, they're always unloading food. They're always taking care. They're always doing something. Uh, and, and going to Aldi's, going to, hey, I just want, I, I got to give you a, a, a something from the platform, the stage here this morning, I'm going to just tell you, is that Aldi's in Tays Valley has been a fantastic and faithful contributor to this food pantry, to this ministry. <laughs> so if you have an opportunity to serve them or go by there, say thank you on behalf of the bridge. They are wonderful. Also, a lot of these Dollar Generals, uh, hey, I was just waiting on you. Alan, come, run, 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 run. No, no, I'm serious, I'm serious, I'm just, I'm just teasing. You can come though, come. Uh, uh, stock and shelves, they're always here. You could, I could, they're always here, stock and shelves. Sorting and folding, hanging clothes. Meal prep uh, on, on meal days. Uh, then working days of the giveaway. What are, what are all the Dollar General stores that help us? I just talked to them about all these. What are all the, you know them off the top of your head? Uh, yeah, we have the Dollar General that's in Taze Valley Shopping Center. We have the Dollar General in uh, Winfield. And there's a new Dollar General that's in between Winfield and St. Albans. It's a Dollar General Market. And, uh, and, they, and they just opened up about a month ago. And they have a lot of food. If you ever want to shop at a Dollar General that has food, they have tons of food down there. And we just started getting things from them. I got to go tomorrow and pick up four big boxes of meat from them. So, uh, so we get, you know, the, the, if you go to a Dollar General, they're helping us also. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, think, I, think, I think honor should be given to, to those that are, that are doing things for us. And, and Alan is here uh, two days a week running, right? Yeah, and I just picked up Mondays, if we're going to do Mondays, right, with you. I got a bunch tomorrow. Pray for me. Pray for my back. And remember, I'm 56. So anyway, uh, but he's, he's a, a year older than me. So anyway, <laughs> he does this all the time. So uh, honestly, I mean, this is a ministry of your church, and you should be able to come out and say, hey, I just want to, you know, whatever I can do. I hear people say, I, I just want to do something. Do you have a thing or two to do? Well, I, I want to tell you about this guy right here. He works like a fiend, and he's got a little problem with the shoulder, and we're getting rid of the hip issue one of these days. Hope. We hope. But he's always here carrying, working, doing the things that God's called him to do. Uh, and he needs your help, and we need your help, uh, because he can't, there are times he looks and says, hey, I need some help, you know, I need you to be here, and I'm, thank, I'm thankful for that, uh, so those folks that are coming out, if you can get an opportunity to be here, I'm sure you see Alan or Mary anytime, they'll tell you what you can do, they don't have to be here for you to go do it, they'll tell you what you need to do, just go do it, and have at it, okay, they do enough by themselves, so let's give them a hand, okay. <laughs> And of course, the, the, the last thing I'll bring up, your church care. Uh, I mean, there's things around here. Y'all know this is a big building. But I gotta tell you too, it's, it's older. We've done a lot of renovations, but it's older. And you all know, just like in your own body, the older you get, the more you need to work on it a little bit. The more paint you gotta put on the barns, anyway. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that we gotta do. Uh, mowing and garden care. I mean, we got, hey, hey, how many of you all have seen the new garden area out front coming in? How many, or how many of you just walked by and said, what? I don't even recognize. We, have, we, sp we spent some money to, to, to beautify what it, is, it looks like to come into our, your church. Uh, always we could use somebody to help. If you need to know what to do on that, Miss Kathy, as a matter of fact, she is like, wow, Miss Kathy. Anyway, uh, and then number three, then number three is, whatever else needs to be done. There is so much stuff around here to do. So many things that your pastor is into, is pushing, saying. So many things that some of the folks here in the middle of this church, they're involved in that. 
if you're not doing something, you're, hi you're hiding from it. If you don't want to do something, you're hiding from it. And I don't want you to feel bad. And see, because here's, here's the thing. I, I remember this, this story, and, and we'll close with this. The story it happens in, in Matthew chapter 20. It's about this wealthy landowner who had all of this stuff. And he said, I got to get some workers. I got to get some workers, and I got, I got to get them now. So he went out and got a bunch of workers, and he negotiated to deal with these workers. And he recognized that they weren't getting it all done. About halfway through the day, he went and got some more workers. And he said, hey, we got to get these workers to do. So Because what I'm going to take away from you is I ain't been here very long. Because this, they, they weren't getting it all done. With the hour left in the day, the man, the land, landowner went and got some more workers. And he said, I, I need some work. So they got all the work done. So he said, I need you to do this. I need you to line up with those last ones that came and all the way to the first ones. So they lined up there. And, this, and, and here's, what, here's what it says in Matthew chapter 20. He said, he said this. He said, uh, I, want you to, I want you to line up. And he said he started giving them money. And he had give the ones that were first, that were only been there an hour, the exact same amount that he had agreed to with the ones in the last. Well, the ones in the last, I guarantee you, were saying, oh, goodness, I'm going to get so much more. <laughs> I know we agreed to that, but I'm going to get so much more. And he started handing it out. And every person got exactly the same. Got exactly the same. Here's the thing. That those people that had been there all day got mad. Got mad. They took my ladle. They stepped in front. They're getting the same blessing. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, verse number 1, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Remember, we've been talking about the kingdom of heaven. It's like this. You haven't been here very long? It's all right. Because you'll get the same blessing as the person who's been here forever. Because this is what I like what Jesus said. Jesus looked at them and said, is it not my blessing to give? Is it not mine to give? He said, that, that guy, this wealthy landowner, it's mine. Why are you questioning mine? Don't worry, because the last will be like the first, and the first will be like... So he's saying to us, he's saying to you, if you've been here a short time, you think this is your church... Step up. Do it. The same blessing that everybody else gets is the same blessing that you'll get. Because there's, in, in the book of James, James says it like this. All good gifts come from above. From the Father of lights who distributes all of these things without being partial. For how long you've been there, what you do, he gives them to you no matter what. So I wanted to encourage you on this Family Sunday. I picked this Family Sunday out. I picked this message out just for you. Is there are many opportunities each and every day to receive from the Spirit of God like the land receives in the River Jordan. It's your decision where you want to live, in the Dead Sea or in like the Sea of Galilee. If we'll all stand this morning. And I want this to be a reflective time. I want this to be, and I presented to you, and I can give these things to you in writing. If you would like them, say, hey, I'd like to find out what I can do, who I can help. What. And, and, and it's not about lifting you up. It's just about, hey, God, I, I want to serve as I'm serving you. I want to do as I'm doing for you. Because, God, you've been faithful to me. And, God, as you examine the hearts of these that are around you this morning, Lord. Lord, if there be anyone here that doesn't know you. And says, I'm neither the Dead Sea nor the Sea of Galilee. But I want to be connected to what God is doing and how he's flowing. I want to be connected. I want that source if that's you this morning, I want you to step out and I want you to come down this way. I want you to do the first step of defeating the enemy that, hey, today is going to be my day. I know I want to be, hey, I may be the last one coming in, but I know this, I'm going to be the first one there just to say, God, I need you in my life. If that's you, I want you to come.
If you need prayer for anything at all, we have an awesome prayer team up here and, and, and they'll pray with you and believe with you and they'll walk with you. But as we close in prayer and we close with this opportunity for you to come, I'm gonna be believing that God is gonna cause some seas of Galilee to begin to distribute themselves within our body to bring the fruitfulness of the blessings of God throughout this whole place. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just turn this time over to Holy Spirit. God, you said that no man can come to the Father except by you, the Holy Spirit, that draws them to you. God, I pray that you draw those that are lost and wayward, that they open up their hearts to you today that they make the decision to say yes to you. I pray that, Lord Jesus, that there'll be many here that will say, yes, Lord, I've lived in the Dead Sea long enough and I haven't found any joy. I felt like I'm alone. I want to get in the Sea of Galilee where there's a lot of things happening, where there's a lot of things being produced. Lord, I pray for this church and I pray that, Lord God, as we close this service, Lord, that you'll continue to touch our lives and touch our heart, Lord God, as we continue to serve you by serving your people. I pray that, Lord God, as we go from this room to the other, that you will allow us to connect up individually one with another, that you have opportunity for relationships to be built through sitting down and fellowshipping over food. I thank you that, Lord God, that you will bless our food. You'll bless those hands that have labored and worked to get this done pray that, Lord God, that you will bless the time that we're going to have. Lord, we ask and believe all of these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you need prayer today, come. If you don't, just go right over.